Hi everybody, in this video I'm in New York City in Central Park where I show you how I develop a painting. I talk about the supplies I'm using, how I develop the composition, how I think through color decisions. Uh, then at the end of the video I'll be back in the studio kind of wrapping things up and pulling all the ideas together. Hello everybody, I am in Central Park and I'm looking for a place to paint. And Central Park of course, there's a ton of things, ton of subject matter, a lot of very different type of subject matter. And after coming here the first few times and being overwhelmed by so much stuff, um, I've gotten used to just looking for subtle, little simple things that make good composition. So what I'm gonna do is take this backpack off and set up here and just talk about the setup I'm using. I'm using gouache. Um, and the whole gouache setup is geared towards just simplicity and easy to travel with. So if I was at home, I would have a little bit more complicated setup. But um, I'm going to sit up here and talk about what I'm composing and what I'm thinking about and go from there. Okay, I'm set up here to paint. Picking these rocks with the trees. Simple, looking for large masses. I'm going to start with pencil uh, because it's on paper and I can kind of simply block in the big shapes. No detail. Um, I, can, I can do it with the brush too, just like an oil. I treat these pretty much just like oil. Now this is my setup here. I'm gonna make sure. Uh, these are my paints here. And I'm using oil uh, brushes here. But I just cut the ends off so they fit in a container a little bit easier to travel with. And this is my palette. It's just a simple watercolor palette, maybe six dollars. And uh, the trays here uh, for the colors, I have titanium white on the left, and cad yellow, light yellow ochre, cad red medium, bird sienna. Then two blues, just because I use mostly blue. Another yellow, because I use a lot of yellow. And then more white. So the extra slots here are just for the same colors that I'm going to be using more of. And then a little container here for water. Now this is my drawing here. Um, looks a little chaotic, but the trees I have mapped out in terms of foreground trees and background trees. And uh, just trying to get simple shape, and they're really simplified from what the trees are doing here. And that's kind of my setup, but I've zoomed in quite a bit more. Um, I can do that. There we go. That's more of my setup right there. So zooming in to what's important, there we go, right there. And I don't see background, well, I do see the background trees, and I'm going to push them further back. And then the foreground trees will be darker and a bit more colorful and warmer. And the foreground is minimized here. The foreground is minimized. Uh, it's smaller down near the bottom because I want more rock and trees. And if I see too much foreground, if I put the horizon line up in here, then the trees don't show at all. So really think about what's going to be showing the most and what's least important and figure that out, out in the composition stage, the drawing stage. Just trying to mass things together. Okay, now here is my simple block in. Not really finished with it yet. I need the darks in here. And here's the, uh, the view. Again, I've zoomed in a lot more than what the camera is showing. Still have the darks on the rocks and the darks in the foreground and some more darks in the trees, just getting things filled in, just kind of a map of large masses uh, before I start to break it up. And here I've got a little bit more blocked in. You can see the dark shadows on the rocks and the lights. The lights are where all the color is here. And I'm not focusing as much on color. In other words, I'm making color decisions. Uh, the color of the rock is a blue and burnt sienna. And then I alter that slightly by adding a little bit of green, yellow and blue, a little bit of red or orange, the 
yellow and red to make orange. So I just subtle color changes. Some of it I see, some of it I don't. But what I'm trying to suggest is the variation of color I see. I don't have to match the color, but just show variation. And I'm focusing on just the simple dark and light. I'm trying to get a half tone in there, but my half tone keeps getting either too dark or too light. The gouache dries darker, so it's kind of hard sometimes uh, when you add too much water, it'll dry a lot darker than what you think. So you have to get used to that a little bit, but I like the spontaneity of it. I'm going to go back into the trees and start to break those up. Right now they're two lined up, one, two, three, two centered, two even, but uh, I think that's fixable. Okay, so a little bit more blocking now. I've, I've simplified the trees more. I kind of moved the shapes of the trees so they're not too symmetrical. Uh, there's kind of a fourth group of tree, a smaller one, kind of in front to the right. Kind of broke up that one, two, three shape and just keeping the background simple obviously I'm not reproducing exactly what's there but that's not the goal in painting uh, in a studio or, or outside but especially outside because I just can't reproduce the clutter and I don't want to I'm trying to suggest this uh, uh, the shapes I'm trying to suggest the idea of a lot of trees there so doing that here I'd hold that up it um, and the paint starts to run. Uh, but if I can suggest the clutter and redesign the shapes, I'm still painting what's there. I'm still looking for the simple dark and light shapes. I'm just eliminating some things and simplifying some things to kind of suggest the overall feel of what's there. And this is my palette. I haven't used much of it yet. Um, and this wipes off just like watercolor. You can just get a wet paper towel and wipe it off. And uh, the sun has popped out. So this is six by eight, so it's easy to kind of darken the darks really quickly. Because uh, my simple block game is more for cloudy day. Okay, here's a finished painting. A uh, little bit of detail, not much. I'm just again, trying to suggest the light that's there. there are a couple of people on the rocks off and on. That kind of gives it scale sense of what's going on there so here's the palette it gets pretty dirty I'm gonna go ahead and do another painting I won't clean this I'll just squeeze out more paint right on top of the dirty paint it tends to, to stay pretty clean all right thanks for going out into the field with me today what I wanted to get across is the idea when you're painting outside the goal is to simplify and that's kind of the key word. If I can simplify everything I'm doing, simplify my subject to just four or five big basic shapes, then simplify the values to two, three values uh, that give the subject some form, because value shows form, but not too much. Too many values um, is like picky detail. So you want to stay away from that. Also, uh, you want to eliminate decide what the focal point is, what you're uh, trying to focus in on, and eliminate everything else. You don't need to paint everything you see when you're outside. For one thing, it's impossible, and it makes the painting a lot more difficult if you try and include everything. So go through that list in your mind of simplification, simple shapes, simple values, eliminating, but also color, simplify the color um, you don't need any more really than just three colors in white, some kind of red, yellow, blue, and white. Um, but if you add more colors, think about a warm and a cool of red, yellow, blue, like cadmium red light, a lizard and crimson, that's your two reds, a warm and a cool, um, ultramarine blue, and maybe a viridian. Viridian would be your warm blue, ultramarine be a cool blue, um, and then cad yellow light and um, yellow ochre. Yellow ochre being a bit cooler than cad yellow light. Um, so there's your warm and cool of your three primaries. And there's a bunch of different variations of that. Uh, or you can have a, a red, yellow, blue, and then the uh, secondary colors. Um, 
green, orange, and violet. And that gives you a, a kind of a full range and a limited palette. What you don't want to do is go outside with 20, 30 colors on the palette because it's just not helpful outside. I don't find it really helpful inside either, but um, outside it can really make things difficult by adding more colors to your palette. So check out my video on plein air painting uh, for more tips on painting outside. And if you'd like more artist tips, you might like to sign up for my free newsletter and check out the link below in the notes to sign up for that.